Soundtrap is a browser-based audio creation and editing program that you can use to create original music or podcasts. To begin, go to Soundtrap.com, create an account, or log in with Google. If you've already started your podcast, you'll see it listed under My Projects, and you can use the Studio button to return to editing. To create a new project, choose Enter Studio, and then select Podcast. You can click here or here to create a track to record your narration on. If you recorded your narration in another program already, you could import that file using the option at the bottom of the window. But if you are planning to record in Soundtrap, click Voice and Microphones. You will be prompted to start recording right now, which you can do, or you can close this window and record later. Regardless, you will need to make sure you allow access to your microphone when you're prompted. I'll click Start Recording and we'll use my script to record a section of my podcast. I think it's easier to record in sections, but you can record the entire podcast in one take if you want to. When you're done, click the X to close the recording window. To preview your recording, click and drag this playhead around to preview different sections of your narration. Use Soundtrap's tools to easily edit them out. You can use the space bar to start and stop playback, or you can use the play and pause button. To add additional narration, click the red record button. That new recording is going to be added wherever you have placed the playhead. So be very mindful of that. If you have the playhead in the middle of existing narration, it's going to stick itself in the middle of it. It is pretty easy to rearrange your recorded segments later by clicking on them and dragging them around. And you can even highlight several clips at once to move them at the same time. I want to leave a few seconds of silence at the beginning of my podcast, so I'm going to drag all of my audio clips to the right so that they start about five seconds in. And the time markers up at the top here will help you arrange the items. If you make a mistake while recording your narration like I did, simply pause and then reread that entire sentence. Let's look at my example. Each person's part for your podcast. Even with a script, mistakes are in even with a script, mistakes are inevitable. To remove my mistake, I first need to isolate it. So I'm going to put the playhead right before the sentence where my mistake happened. You need to click once on your narration to make sure it's selected, and then use Control E to make a split in the section of this narration. You can also right click and choose split region. Now I need to move the playhead after my mistake happened. I'll again make sure I've selected the clip and then hit Control E to again make a split. Now my mistake is isolated. I can click on it and use the delete button on my keyboard to get rid of it. To remove this silence that I've now created, I can click on the next clip and drag it over, or I can highlight several clips with my mouse and move them all at the same time. To save your podcast, give it a title, and then click Save. And it's a very good idea to save often. Now is also a good time to add my group members as collaborators. Click the Collaboration button and then Invite. Enter your partner's Google account information, and then your partner will get an email with the invitation and link to this project. When you're working with someone else, you can either record on the same microphone or narration track, or you can set up separate narration tracks for each of you. If you want to do this, click Add New Track and then Voice or Microphone. Close the recording prompt and use the dots to rename each track so each partner knows where to record. Notice how the active track I am on changes to white. This will help you and your partner record on the correct track. It's probably easiest to record together in order on one track, but if that is not possible, you can record separately. You will just need to arrange the clips in the right order after you've done your editing and recording. Once you have recorded and edited your narration, you might want to add some intro and exit music. If you have a music file on your computer, you can choose Add New Track and then Import File. If you don't have your own music file, you can just use the loops library to find a pre-existing track for use. 
You can use these filters to browse the different loops. There are quite a few, and you can preview them. Once you find one that you like, double click on it or drag and drop it to add it to the new track. Most podcasts do not have music playing the entire time, just at the beginning and the end. So I'm going to trim this loop back to right about here. I want it to overlap a little with the narration so I can fade the music out as my talking begins for a nice transition. So I'm going to put the playhead where I want the loop to end. I'm going to click on the loop to make sure it's selected and then use Control E to make a split. I'll delete the part of the loop I don't want. Then I will click on the remaining intro music and choose edit and then I will fade it out. This dot right here is where the fade out begins and you can adjust that. For symmetry, it's nice to use that same audio clip at the end of the podcast and you can add it the same way. Again, I want it to overlap a little bit with my narration and then I will use the playhead and control E to shorten the clip. I'll again choose to edit it, but this time I will fade in the music. When you're done, make sure to go back and preview, and you can adjust the volume level of each track as necessary. If you and your partner use different microphones, you may need to use the volume controls to turn up or down volume so each person's volume is similar. You can also adjust the volume of your intro and exit music as needed. A few other tools to be aware of include the zoom in and zoom out, which allows you to see more of your project at once or zoom in more closely to make some finer adjustments. Of course, there's undo and redo buttons. And then the master volume control, which will turn up and down the volume of all of the tracks in your recording. When you're done, save your final changes and then you need to export your finished file out of this editor. Choose File, Export, Export Project to MP3. If you get this message, just wait a few minutes. Your podcast is essentially still in the process of being saved. When you're able to export, title your podcast and note where you are saving it. You now have an MP3 file of your podcast that you can easily share or post.